Greetings everyone. We once again come to you in Jesus name. The one who is our Savior and our Lord and our God and our King and our Messiah. He is our rock, our fortress, our strong tower, our deliverer, our mighty God, our Prince of Peace, our wonderful counselor. In him is all wisdom and knowledge. There is no wisdom, no counsel, no understanding against the Lord. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of and all that dwell therein. He does whatever pleases him in the heavens and in the earth in the seas and in the depths and in him we live and move and have our being and he gives life and breath to all mankind and we have fallen in love with him and we want you to know the one who helped us in our life are you prepared for heaven my life has never been the same it's the abundant life nothing can compare to the life that a person can have knowing Jesus Christ knowing that they have peace with God. Scripture says, therefore, having been justified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have peace with God. Do you have peace with God the Father? Scripture says there is no peace for the wicked. Scripture says, let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. But let him who glory, glory in this, that he understands and knows the Lord, that he is the Lord, and he exercises loving kindness, righteousness, and judgment in the earth. For in these things does he delight. Scripture says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Today, America is in terrible spiritual condition before God. We have a deficit of 33 trillion dollars or so more than any other country across the whole world people are in debt with credit card debt people live above their means people don't think about how god wants them to live their life people are committing suicide people are depressed people are taking pills for the, so they can sleep they take pills in order to wake up they drown themselves out trying to escape the realities of life without taking thought of how jesus loves them Think about him. He is the Prince of Peace. How can you have peace in your life if you reject the one who is the Prince of Peace? You cannot. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Think about all that he went through on the cross for you and me and all of humanity. They ripped the beard out of his face. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They hit him over the head with a reed. They spit upon him, they mocked him, and they whipped his back with a cat of nine tails with, at the end of it and had pieces of bone and glass and metal, and it ripped his back wide open. And then on, not only that, he had to carry the cross beam for some time, and then they nailed him to the cross beam, and they put him on the cross. It is the most excruciating, painful, agonizing, shameful death you can possibly imagine. And it was devised by the Romans. But it was God the Father's plan to send His Son to die for sinful humanity that we might be reconciled back to Him and have fellowship with Him and salvation and heaven and forgiveness. Only through Jesus. It says, He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, God the Father treated Jesus Christ as if he had committed the sins of everyone that ever lived in the history of man, even though he never sinned. That is how God the Father treated his son in order for us to be forgiven. All of sinful humanity can be forgiven if they believe in Jesus. Only through Jesus can you be forgiven. No other way. So why not embrace Jesus Christ? He doesn't want you to die in your sins and spend eternity in hell. He wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. So are you saved? Do you love Jesus Christ? Are your sins forgiven? Are you born again? Do you love football more than you do Jesus Christ? How are you going to spend your time tomorrow? Are you going to worship Jesus Christ in spirit and truth? Do you have any idols in your life? Scripture says, keep yourself from idols. 
He said, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. He said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Says the scripture, says, the word of God is alive and powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's able to divide between the heart and the soul of a person, and the joints and the marrow. And it discerns the thoughts and intents of man's heart. Yes, he knows your heart. And he says they are deceitful and desperately wicked. All of us have a deceitfully wicked heart before God, who is absolutely perfect. And the only way you can have a new heart, he said, I will take the heart of stone out of you and put a heart of flesh says, whoever is in Christ, they're a new creation. All things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Do you have a new heart? Is your life focused on how to please God or how to please yourself? You can't serve two masters. You'll love one and hate the other and hate the one and love the other. It says, make the tree and its fruit good or make the tree bad. Which one is it for you? What kind of fruit comes out of your life? Scripture says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If you curse and blaspheme one time in your whole life, you can't go to heaven. Think about it. So that's why we all need forgiveness. Everyone has said a cuss word, I can imagine. At least one time in their life, most people. Most people have lied at least one time in their whole life. Think about it. Every day you haven't loved Jesus Christ with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and your neighbors yourself, you've sinned. And you've fallen short of God's standard of perfection and holiness. And you stand before God guilty. And you need forgiveness. So, who do you love more than Jesus Christ? Is he the center of your life? Is he the focus of your life? Who or what do you belong to? Who or what do you worship? How do you focus your life? What are you going to do the rest of the day? Do you know how to pray? Do you worship Jesus in spirit and truth? Do you have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling within you? Many people in Ukraine, they just, they cross themselves and they repeat our Father who art in heaven and they think everything is fine with their soul. I know this one guy who said it like 40 times. And then they pray for dead people that have already made their decision. See, you need to make a decision for Jesus Christ while you have breath. Because once you take your last breath and you're pronounced dead, and you're put in the grave, it's too late. There's no reincarnation, no annihilation, and no purgatory. It is appointed to a person once to die and after that the judgment. You don't go into some other life thinking you're gonna be a prince or a princess or some other, or animal or something like that. No. Your soul will live forever in one of two places based on what you do with Jesus Christ. So are you ready for heaven? your heart stops tonight, will you go to heaven because you believe in Jesus Christ? Ray Liotta's heart stopped in the night. Lisa Marie Presley, I think she died in the night. Where is Susan Summers? Where is Tony Bennett? Where is Tina Turner? Where is Carl Weathers? Think about it. Some of the people that recently died. Life is short, but eternity is long. And what a person does with Jesus determines where they spend forever. What about Corey Monteith? What about Whitney Houston? What about Kelly Preston? What about Tanya Roberts? And Joan Rivers? And Marky Post? And Raquel Welch? And Jane Mansfield? And Marilyn Monroe? And Princess Diana? Where are these people? And Johnny Carson? And Merv Griffin? And John Candy? And John Denver? And John Ritter? See, life is short. Think about some of the people that died. It, life is so short, you have no idea how long you're going to live. And every day you put off receiving Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life, your heart and your life become more and more hard and callous and insensitive to the things of God. And pretty soon people just say, ah, I don't want anything to do with that. It says the message of the cross is foolishness to those that are perishing, but to those that are being saved is the power of God unto salvation. Who is Jesus to you? Is he the power of God unto salvation? Or is he aroma of life to you? Or aroma of death? Do you love him? Or do you hate him? Are you for him? Are you against him? If we follow you around for a week, is there enough evidence to show forth in your life you're a true child of God and ready for heaven? 
Many people think they're going, they think everybody goes to heaven. What they do is when someone they know dies, they say, R.I.P., rest in peace. Well, if they didn't know Jesus Christ before they took their last breath, there is no peace for those that reject Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. There is no peace in hell. And so we don't want you to think everyone who's born goes to heaven. Only those who are born again. Are you born again? Don't put it off. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Today's the day of salvation. Tomorrow isn't promised to anybody. God bless you.